Well, if you watched baseball in the 1970s or 80s, you know our next guest very well. A six-time All-Star, a World Series MVP, a mainstay for the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Penguin, Ron Say. Say worked for the Dodgers after his playing days were done in 1987, and now he's launching a media career full-time. So here's our conversation, talking baseball with the Penguin. Is this Ron Say kind of coming out of retirement here and, uh, and, and, and hitting the media world by storm? I'm, I'm not exactly sure, Mark. I uh, have delved into a couple things uh, uh, late in life. Uh, the, the podcast is is uh, something that I uh, got involved with here about six, eight months ago. It took a couple of years to kind of put it together. We were kind of just fiddling around with it. But uh, it's more of an eclectic show. Uh, you know, we throw in some sports there. We have sports people on, baseball players, uh, announcers, things like that. But uh, I, I want it to be a pretty diversified group. You know, I want people of color. I want men, women. Uh, I want all kinds of things on there. I want to expand that, see where it goes. And uh, launching my book, uh, Penguin Power, uh, just came out on the 13th. I uh, did my first book signing uh, for Triumph Books at uh, Diesel Bookstore in uh, Santa Monica, Brentwood. Uh, last night I had fun with that. So uh, the book is available on Amazon. Uh, the pre-orders are there. So uh, excited to be doing that. But uh, it is kind of a uh, a strange change of pace here, uh, uh, delving into these two things at the age of 75. So uh, it's brand new territory for me. And it's kind of exciting. Well, I, I grew up watching you play for the Dodgers and you're always so stoic and, um, you know, kind of to, to – you're always dialed in. I think my old man used to say, uh, yeah, watch how that guy plays. It's no nonsense, gets the job done. So there's like an eclectic side here where you're always kind of thinking about uh, life off the field and, and, and different interests like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, we've uh, had some recent shows here where we've uh, uh, gotten some more women on the show. Uh, I had Corey Close, the uh, UCLA women's basketball coach, uh, on here a few weeks ago, uh, and a couple of days ago, I was fortunate enough to have Billie Jean King on after she returned from the French Open in Paris. So, uh, touching base with that a little bit, it was exciting to uh, to be able to get Billie Jean on, and uh, she was a great interview and had a lot of fun with that. But uh, yeah, when in my playing days, you know, I, I was focused. You know, uh, uh, you know, I came to play every single day, and. Uh, Funny thing about it, I mean, it looks maybe a one thing, but, uh, you know, I had a little boy racing around me inside all the time, and I was enjoying this without, uh, you know, maybe a, a, a party display like they have today going on where they celebrate everything. Yeah, what do you think about that? Are you a fan of the bat flip and the, all the dancing? Like, what would have happened if you would have pointed at Steve Garvey in the dugout and put on some, like, like face goggles or whatever the guys are doing today? Oh, you know, I, I, I think that uh, I, I would have enjoyed, you know, the fact that we could have opened up a little bit. You know, we kind of saved our celebrations. We were kind of nonchalant. We we did get into the high fives back in the late 70s and that stuff. But that was kind of the extent of it. Um, you know, uh, uh, players that you played against, especially the pitchers, uh, kind of resentful when you, uh, uh, you know, started celebrating. And uh, I used to like to celebrate you know, in the moment, my own way, but the party began after the game in the clubhouse when we won and, or when we came off the field and everybody congratulates each other. But um, today's game is much different. I don't mind it so much. It's a game of entertainment. We all know that, but uh, their display and their celebrity is now part of it. And uh, I'm not so sure that I care much for all of the sports all-star games, uh, the basketball game, you know, the games are up in the high 100s. Uh, there's no defense. It's a game of entertainment. They're heaving up half-court shots. Uh, they're doing alley-up ducks. They're in football. Now you have a flag football game. Uh, I'm not in favor of that. I mean, that uh, doesn't seem like I should be rewarded to play in a flag football game. And in the baseball all-star game last couple of years now, they've had their players mic'd up on the field. That's dangerous. And, uh, you know, I, I look, we all, if this is the way that you're going to go, we have to understand it, but it's not a competitive game anymore. You know, it's just, uh, it's just for entertainment. 
Well, the competition on the field, we're, we're having a lot of fun out here in Arizona. I don't know how people are feeling about the Dodgers, but we're, we're kind of enjoying them being young and trying to, trying to figure it out. And the, the Diamondbacks have been on fire until two straight losses here against the Phillies. How much, how much are you watching the NL West uh, from, from your vantage point, and how do you feel about the Dodgers' chances of catching the D-backs this year? Well, um, uh, first of all, I, uh, uh, I, I no longer work for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Uh, I, I had a 40 year stint there and, uh, I stepped down uh, a little over a year ago, uh, time to move on. Uh, but I do still follow it. I, I don't follow it as closely. I don't watch many games. I look at the results, uh, and my preseason pick, uh, for the, for the NL West was San Diego. Uh, I thought San Diego did a terrific job of, of, uh, uh, bolstering their club on all levels. And uh, the way that they got hot at the end of the season, uh, they they uh, they got on fire at the right time, uh, was the playoffs. But the thing that uh, was interesting between last year, uh, between the Dodgers, the Dodgers got off such a big lead that they coasted in for the second half, and everybody knew that they were going to win. The Padres were completely out of it, but they weren't out of the, out of the uh, wild card race. And so they had something to play for the whole season. The Dodgers did not. And so when it got to playoff time, uh, the Padres were battle, battle ready and uh, they had the momentum and, uh, you know, they took care of business. And uh, I thought that the Dodgers lost a lot of players, a lot of key players over the season. Uh, they were going to bring in a lot of new people. Um, I, I think offensively from uh, that standpoint, the Dodgers have, uh, you know, uh, had a, a good offensive club, but they don't scare me. And uh, they're pitching, and there was an article in the paper or whatever it was uh, that I looked at briefly saying, is this the worst pitching uh, the Dodgers have had in their history? Uh, I didn't get into it, but obviously, uh, you know, they're, uh, they're not playing as well. And in the beginning of the season, you know, they were talking about, you know, could this be the Dodgers' best team ever for some reason? You know? It's all hype. Uh, please, go out and play like it. Let's talk about it after the fact. You know, uh, I am surprised, uh, pleasantly surprised by the Diamondbacks' performance. You know, they have really played well. Uh, they are, what are they, one or two games in front at this point? Yeah, I, two, I, I two after last night, lost to the Phillies. Oh, yeah. Right. So, um, you know, the Dodgers, uh, you know, they, they have, you know, their pitching is, continues to struggle. They're, they're not pitching like they used to. So um, I'm really surprised that San Diego hasn't played better. Uh, I, I really did think that they would be probably the one to challenge uh, Atlanta uh, for the uh, National League Championship. Uh, when I look over in the Central, uh, it doesn't really bother, it doesn't scare me much. Uh, you know, the Cardinals, for some reason, have just gone to the bottom. And they have got such a talented group of people over there. Never give up on them, but, you know, they've lost – like 13 of 17 that I just read. Uh, so they're, they, and, and Aaron, uh, Nolan Arenado even said that, you know, I don't know if this is just a, you know, a thing to come and pass. We haven't played good baseball all year long. So I don't know how deep that goes, but there's still a second half to play. But, uh, you know, the Diamondbacks, you should be happy. You know, uh, they should be really pleased with their plan. I think they're a surprise. What does it take to win a championship? And what was it like being a champion in Los Angeles while you were playing? Um, well, we we had a lot of history and tradition to follow. And uh, I think we did a really good job of our 10-year period here. Uh, we had the longest running, most successful infield in Major League history. Uh, that's a fact. Uh, we were in four World Series. We were world champions. We had MVPs. We had World Series MVPs. We had... Every member of our infield is a multiple-time All-Star, and as a matter of fact, the '81 team uh, uh, we had that won the World Championship. Uh, the, the only guy that was not an All-Star on the entire team was uh, Steve Yeager. Sorry, Steve, uh, but uh, that's how talented we were. And when you throw the infield, the fundamental parts of it are uh, together. Uh, we're going to play every year. We destroyed the farm system, by the way, for 10 years. There wasn't a Dodger infielder in the farm system paid it to the major leagues as a Dodger. He had to go someplace else to do it. Uh, that being a good and bad part, you know, we had Dusty Baker, Rick Monday, and Reggie Smith, and uh, all, those, all those guys are all-star caliber players. And, uh, you know, it was just a, a really good uh, group of people who understood the challenges and responsibilities, and, you know, we were able to get it done. And we were also the first team 
in Major League history that drew three million people. Uh, we won. We we drew. We were the number one attraction in baseball home through our career, and uh, we even led the uh, National League in attendance on the road, which is a double, and not too many teams get to that. So it was a real thrilling time for us, and I want to thank the fans for that, and uh, they do and live in the house that we built. All right, and when people come up to you and see you on the street or see you at the book signing, do they ask, I mean, do they call you Penguin? Do you tell, how many times have you told the Penguin story of how you got the nickname? Uh, many, many, many times. And uh, uh, I got it in college uh, at Washington State University. Chuck Wheaton, a uh, coach there, uh, coined me the Penguin. Uh, he didn't refer to me as the Penguin much, but it was kind of the nickname. Um, I had a high school nickname from football called Scooter. And then uh, when I went to college, I, I uh, obtained the nickname of uh, the Penguin. And then when I signed professionally and started playing, Tom Lasorda called me, started calling me the Penguin, and uh, he was taking all the credit for it. And I kept reminding him that, no, 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 you're not the originator here. Uh, you need to step aside. But uh, he would still take credit anyway. And so I finally just let it go uh, because he, he 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 was his own person. Yeah. Well, and a star was born. So uh, just tell us real quick when we can hear the, uh, the show, where we can uh, – uh, sure. Read the book, and is there potentially a signing out here in Arizona? Say when the Dodgers come to town in in in, uh, in August. Thank you. I would. I'm I'm definitely going to look into that possibility. So uh, Triumph Books, who carry my book, are the ones that uh, are are setting up some of these. And some of these private signings are different signings that I might get involved with. Uh, certainly, there's a possibility. Uh, since it is the first couple days of launch, uh, you know, we're still you know organizing things. So. Uh, I would look forward to coming over and do that. As far as where we are broadcast from, uh, we do our tapings and broadcasts from CRN Talk Radio, and we are on Spotify, Amazon, Apple, Roku. Uh, you can pick us up all there. Uh, the video is Roku. And, uh, you know, just getting started with that, where we have our live show at 11 a.m. on Saturdays, Pacific Standard Time. And, uh, you know, we've... Uh, you know, we've we've gotten into a brand new world. I enjoy doing the uh, the podcasts, but the business side of it is is uh, another venture by itself. It's uh, it's 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 testing. It's very trying. Well, uh, you know, keep keep hammering out, keep sawing wood. We need you to kind of lead the way here, uh, Ron. Say. Uh, the baseball legend here joining us on the extra point. And hey, how about this? Come out here for the book signing. We'll have you sit right here. We'll talk a little more baseball. We have a couple Dodger fans in here. We've been trying to, uh, I guess, you know, make Diamondback fans, but they would be absolutely thrilled to meet Ron Say. So come on out here to Arizona and uh, join us here live in the studio. I'd love to do that, Mark. Thanks so much for having me on. All right, thanks. The Extra Point Podcast is a production of 3TV, CBS5, and azfamily.com in Phoenix, Arizona.